YouTube, what is going on? It is Big Bird, and I am back with another Rome Total War commentary. This uh, was a 20,000 denarii battle played on the Sicilian Hills, I believe is what the map is called. I could be wrong on that. I have chosen Macedonia, and I will be facing off against the SPQR Romans today. So, I will take you over unit compositions, and hopefully we'll get that done before the match starts. Uh, since this was such a high money battle, um, <clears throat> of course I brought six sets of Royal Pikes, which are uh, gold gold. Um, um, for a supporting unit, I have brought in four sets of Cretan Archers, which are also gold gold. Uh, I'd also like to um, let you guys know we this was a CWB rules map. Um, so... I could have brought in more archers if I had wanted to. I decided not to. Uh, that's one of the things I actually really like about CWB, that eight archer rule. It really makes the game more dynamic, just in my opinion. But anyways, um, we've also got two sets of Peltasts here, which are gold defense, um, silver attack, I guess. Um, and then I also have brought along with me four sets of companion cab, which are gold, gold, excuse me, gold, silver, gold, gold, and gold, silver, excuse me, and as well as three sets of light lancers, which are gold, gold. Now we'll look at his unit composition. He's brought six sets of urban cohorts, which are heavily upgraded. Um, Smart, smart decision, obviously. I mean, if it's a 20,000 denarii battle, that's what I'm expecting to see. Um, this is very smart of him as well. He's brought in four sets of Triarii. Again, very upgraded. Very smart decision. Um, he knows my companions are going to be tough. And he um, probably brought the extra four, expecting the Light Lancers. So, again, very smart. This, um, on his part right here, his archers, another very smart decision here. He's brought in four sets of archers, but only with a bronze um, defense upgrade, I believe, or an attack, I'm not sure. Um, he also has two sets of town watch meat shields, I assume. And then he has four sets of uh, Praetorian Cav, which are mostly silver, silver. Um, his general unit's gold, gold. Um, so, at the start of this battle, I, I was a little intimidated at first. Um, I hadn't, I wasn't thinking very properly, and I wasn't picking up on my strengths just yet. I knew I had a light cavalry edge. I knew my companions were better than his Praetorians. Uh, I was pretty sure about that. Um, I knew my archers were better than his, but I wasn't exactly sure how I should, I should use them at this point. Uh, and now, right now, I see his Praetorians moving towards my lancers. I'm just gonna start swinging them a little closer to my army. Um, you know, I don't want I don't want to lose any of those lancers to any stupid charge or anything. So I'm gonna make sure that those stay out of harm's way. Now, if you look at his army here, you can see that he's got his his infantry, um, which are, are being supported by his archers and his triarii um, and his cab. Um, so initially, I thought. Um, okay, what probably needs to happen is for me to try and smash through these urbans, um, and then hopefully I could, if luck would have it, I would be able to take this hill from him and come crashing down on the rest of his army, uh, since they were sitting in this valley. Um, so I start to mobilize four of my pikes here, along with my peltasts, to soak up the peel of fire that, um, these urbans will undoubtedly throw which is the most dangerous element to my royal pikes, would be these urban's pila. Um, which is why I brought the peltists in the first place. They were they were only meant to be meat shields, possibly help out, um, you know, with their javelins, but for the most part, they, they are here for meat shields to soak up uh, these urban pila fire. So you can see here, I'm mobilizing four sets of my royals um, to kind of set up a line. You can see here he sets his urbans to Testudo. Um, he sees what's happening and he's, he's expecting me to march forward with his archers, or with my archers. Now, here's when I actually get to thinking. I see his um, 
his tree area are pulling back, his archers are out here, um, and I think, well, you know, now's a good time to start the skirmish battle. Um, and I, that's when I realized that lining up my four sets of pikes against six sets of urbans is just, it was foolish. Um, definitely a losing, losing fight for my pikes. Um, uphill, they didn't stand a chance. So I go back to my original formation, and my opponent was getting a little antsy, um, accusing me of camping on the hill, which, yes, I am on a slight hill, but in my, in my defense, I feel like I'm on quite flat ground. Anyways, not important. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to start mobilizing my archers here in a second, and here we go. What we're going to do here is we're going to take a few steps forward. Um, we're going to keep most of our um, supporting units and cavalry close by, ready to respond if um, anything happens. Um, but we're stepping forward and stepping forward, and this is when I have my, my uh, moment of um, smarts here. I realize... Um, his archers, he knows his, he's not going to win the skirmish battle with the archers. Um, so, what I do is seeing that they are so unupgraded, they're, they're not even worth killing, to be honest. Um, and that's, you can see right here, all of my archers start shifting. Now, what he sees is the, my archers advancing forward to fire. But what he doesn't realize is I'm not targeting his archers, I am in fact targeting his cab, which are quite stable and vulnerable underneath this hill. So uh, I'll just let you watch here as um, the opening volleys start going. You can see his archers are firing um, at mine, but they are not returning fire. And here comes our first volley. And this unit, okay, lost about five horses, not bad. And he starts to mobilize. He reacts quite quickly to it. Um, But we do get a few a few good volleys off on his horses, and he loses a good, I, I'd say a good 30 horses, um, maybe more, maybe closer to 50. But um, a good sound tactical decision on my part, I feel. I also noticed that he left his archers vulnerable um, since his cab was too far away, and I knew I could outrun his triari. I, I make a run for these archer auxilia. I get a pretty decent charge on him, but I, I lose a lot of comp uh, horses in that charge, which I'm not too happy about. I also um, sent one of my companions down the flank of the urbans, in case you didn't notice that. Now, right here, you can see he's actually doing exactly what I want him to do. Um, by running into my archers, he thinks he's about to kill a bunch of my archers um, with his calf. Um, but the only problem is, is my formation that I had set up with left my pikes in a very, very good position to respond to any kind of horse charge into my archers. Um, however, I do make a micro mistake here uh, and keep my men out of phalanx formation for far too long. Didn't mean to, I just totally forgot that they weren't in phalanx. Now, you can see here his cav are winning. His cav are winning. Uh, it's because my men aren't in phalanx. I've also got one of my light lancers squashed in there somehow, and they took a, a pretty heavy beating. Um, we get lucky and manage to catch his general's unit here. Um, back up here with the cab, you can see we have not taken any losses to my cavalry. Okay, we've taken a few cab losses. We still have a very healthy cavalry. Um, his archers are getting... Uh, they're, they're, they're vulnerable right now. You can see he's got his triarii focused on my light lancers um there his praetorians catch me but it's not going to stop my light lancers they're just going to plow right through those archers and uh head on home uh or okay maybe so i thought <laughs> just kidding i guess those lancers are, are doomed um but so you can see here he's got his men bundled up again again i i see a very good opportunity to get his archers some of these archers out of the way I really was surprised that um, my my charges were doing so little to these archer units. Um, you can see here he's advancing his urbans, which is a smart decision at this point. He knows his cavalry's crippled, his archers are crippled. 
If he doesn't play his Triarie right, they won't be used. So he sends in his Urbans. Um, to counter that, I sent forward my Paltests as soon as I could. However, I forgot to take them off skirmish mode. So you will see they will try to get away from these Urbans um, and effectively do nothing for me, pretty much. Um, you can see here I, I get lucky and manage to block two or three of them. Um, that, that Javelin throw literally didn't do anything. Um, but you can see there, I lose a good 30 to 40 men just off of one javelin throw. And he's going to get two or three of those off into my men. You can see here, I, I tried to charge in my light lancers to try and uh, lessen that Pila volley. It was successful. I managed to stop these Gerbins from throwing. But I did have to sacrifice some cab. Now, over here, you can see he's got his town watch and his triarii. Um, and I do a very foolish maneuver and charge all of my cavalry in there. Um... I'm not sure what I was thinking. I do get lucky, and I realize that I'm fighting mostly spear units very quickly. And I do I pull out uh, my cab without taking too heavy of losses. Um, and at this point, you can see here my men are uh, some of them are glitching. Right there, you see the very first uh, hammer and anvil strike from that long-awaiting companion cab that was waiting behind the urban lines. And uh, here, these triarii are causing a lot of problems. I was having pathfinding issues. I was trying to get my cab away from them. But instead, Rome Total War decides to run them straight into them, naturally. Um, gotta love that, but we'll deal with it. Uh, so you can see here, he's still got a few token units of Praetorian cab, which are, he are, he's resting. Um, I should have pulled out these these companions quicker, but I didn't, and they get um, sandwiched here, but um, these, these uh, Praetorians um, alone aren't going to be enough to take them, but sandwiched will probably break my horse, my uh, companions here. Right here I get a decent charge in on these uh, Urbans, good 30 men lost there. Um, over here, I, I finally get a break and um, manage to route his uh, his right flank here. You can see them starting to waver. Um, we're starting to end up in a bad spot here. This is the problem with these urbans. Um, is that their morale is so high that it gives the opponent so much time to get around and flank you. Now I have to act quickly. If my men get flanked, this fight could still very much be over. I could still very much lose. You see these Triarii here are mobilizing to flank my Royal Pikes. I'm actually going to sacrifice my General's unit, throw them into these uh, Triarii to try and hold them off from my Pikes to give my Pikes more time to finish. And you can see here, I get very lucky. I managed to route a good amount of his Urban Cohorts, and that frees up my entire right flank. Um, and um, I am able to turn and meet his Triarii and um, managed to get a, uh, a chain route and there you can see my opponent admits defeat so what went well for me in this game um, I played my strengths very well and what's even more important I used my strengths against um, his strengths or the most dangerous things to my army which would have been his Praetorian Cav um, I probably should have used my archers more on his Triarii. I took a gamble there and decided to um, try and cut down his mobility, which in the end paid off. Uh, what didn't go well for me, my micromanaging, again, uh, it's just got to be better. Um, so, thank you guys for watching. I really hope you guys learned something tactical about the game or this battle or some of these factions. Um, please rate, comment, subscribe. I'd love to hear what you guys think about these videos. Um, so, so this is Big Bird signing off. Hope to see you guys next time.